So for me, my personal medicine was always music and the arts. Um, I love to write songs and I love to paint and write stories. And so I would take any negative emotion that I was feeling and I would use it as a positive outlet and try to take something that I felt like ruined me and turn it into something beautiful instead. And another thing is that uh, on my TV show, Every A Thing, we featured so many young uh, people who were going out there doing things in their community. And that to me is what I love to do. I love to help people. And if there's any way that I can reach out, like especially like today, to reach out to people out there, especially you know people who are my age, the youth, that are worrying about uh, mental illness or anything in general, if I know that I can help someone out there and touch their lives in a positive way, then that helps me and I think it also helps them. Um, and you look at you know Canadians and across our lifespan, it, it looks like anywhere between 15 to 25 percent of us at some point in our lifetime may suffer from a serious anxiety problem. So it's so prevalent. That's why shows like this and programs like this are so important because I think we really need to get the message out there that this is something that's common. This is something that a lot of people struggle with and we need to figure out how to help people get those resources. Um, and just hearing the panel today has just been excellent. What do you think is the biggest benefit that someone can have from having MindShift on their phone? <laughs> It was originally developed for youth and young adults. Um, that was the target audience. And um, interestingly, GPs and others who have recommended the app have said that it's, it's they recommend it for a much wider audience. That's my opinion. <clears throat> for me, it was difficult, not difficult, but it was a, a very important matter when they decided to speak up. Uh, that happens a year ago with a full two full page on the Vancouver Sun. So of course nobody wants to have his life spread out for yeah. hundreds of thousands of people to read about, you know, and I was a bit um, overwhelmed by the response. <coughs> um, because, you know, it's me, but it's my family as well. People yeah. seem to know a lot of details of what I went through. However, you know, a f you know I got a few negative feedback from some people, but the vast majority was extremely supportive. <coughs> And then you realize the magnitude of the problem because people came to me asking me for help. There is no shame. Ask for help. There is always somebody who is willing to help. You don't need to live this way. That's true. This is not a life you need to live. But you know, it takes one person to decide. You know, it's you, it's nobody else. So the therapist can only help you. It's not going to do a miracle if you don't decide to take the first steps and embrace with all honesty the problem then it's easy you know it's when you ignore it yeah you know that's a difficulty having conversations reaching out to others around you as difficult as as that can be is really important and obvious and even if it's just one person one person who um, understands you um, can make a huge difference you know really is that um, honest conversation with yourself to, um, to know that you can control and manage how you feel. Yeah. That there is light at the end of the tunnel.